Hello everyone, in this video let us use the Scripner for Jira on Cloud to parse the result of uh, a JQL uh, query. Now we have been using uh, Scripner to do simple things and uh, if you watch my previous video on uh, Scripner for Jira, I basically showed you how to get the issue details. Now let us continue that and before uh, I talk about uh, how to pass the JQL uh, result. We have to first understand uh, how to use the REST API to get the issues based on a JQL query. Now, if you watch my video on uh, on uh, searching on uh, Scriptner for Jira, uh, not really on Jira, uh, script, not really on Scriptner for Jira, but searching the uh, issues using REST API, not Scriptner for Jira on cloud or Scriptner for Jira. You can definitely perform search using this endpoint called REST slash API slash two slash search. And you can then pass in your parameter, which is JQL is equal to the actual query. Now, of course, the query should be valid. So you can definitely pass in something like project is equal to the project name or maybe you want to pass in your filter id so you can also do something like uh, this for example filter is equal to so for, for doing this i think you I, th I think it's better if you use the jira instance to first make sure the the query the jql query is correct so if you go to issues let us click on it and let us perform, let us create a filter that we can probably use in our uh, in our uh, REST API. So if I maybe click on the mobile dev, if you remember yesterday we talked about this, uh, no, not yesterday, but I think uh, in, I think a day before yesterday, uh, we, we, we basically learned how to, uh, how to basically create one project where we can have uh, epics that will span across uh, issues, stories, across uh, multiple projects. And we did, we actually did create a filter. So we, maybe we can reuse it or maybe I can create a simple one. For example, if I have a filter that I want to create, I can first type in my query, assign is equal to uh, maybe, maybe current user. Let us see the result. So it will give us 11 issues and I can save it and I can save it as a assigned to me. So let us say this is the, uh, this is the filter name. So if you notice on top uh, in the URL, you have the JQL. So it is something like a filter is equal to filter ID. So you can use the same endpoint, uh, the same uh, valid filter and which is basically a JQL, something like a filter is equal to filter ID. And if you search it, if you now perform this uh, search, it will give you the list of those 11 issues. And if you look at the JSON, we have basically uh, different issues. And you can, of course, expand each one of them if you want to. For example, uh, for the first issue, you have the issue ID, you have the issue key, and you also have the fields where you can uh, take a look at uh, those fields if if these fields are filled in. And uh, we also have the priority and the priority name. So let us go back to the script now for Jira on Cloud Console. I'll try to use the shortcut. So I'll go to console and uh, let us see how we can do the same thing using uh, script now for Jira. And we'll also learn how to pass the individual issues. So what I'll do, I'll probably uh, find my script that I used in uh, in my uh, previous example. So I'll probably quickly open my GitHub and uh, I will copy the script because we want to save time. We don't really want to type the whole script again. I mean, it is not really a script, but you know, just a few lines of code. So I'll go to my Jira cloud folder and I I think the script that I want to continue is this one. So 
So basically, this is the script from the previous example. We basically learned how to fetch the issue. I'll maybe change this. So what I want, what I want to do is I want to basically change the endpoint, which is uh, this one. And by the way, in my example, in my example, I am basically copying the the URL, the, the endpoint, along with the, what I'm trying to pass as it is. But in reality, try to maybe create a variable where you can uh, you know manage it nicely. Maybe you know on top define a variable like uh, search or jql search and you can let the user who is trying to run the script pass in the actual jql string so what i want to do now i want to get rid of these two lines and before I, before we before we proceed further let us see how it works if i run this hopefully it should give us the same json response that uh, we saw in uh, this example using talent api and of course, we are just looking at body. So we have uh, ex we have some options uh, here to look at, for example, maximum results. I mean, we can always change it. But uh, one thing that I want to focus on is the number of issues. So we have total number of issues, issues returned 11. And we have all the issues here, like the details, further details. Now, if I go back to my, to my actual uh, output, I can see those 11 issues. But I'm not really going to stop here. I will basically pass each one of them now for doing this uh, maybe we can just uh, use uh, log but we will we'll, we'll come to log in uh, you know, the, the log tab here in just a moment what i want to do now i want to now fetch the individual issues so i can do something like uh, dot issues and uh, within those issues uh, let us first focus on the key so if i do something like this it will basically just give me the issue keys now this is fine but that is not really i mean this is of course a good start we have the issue keys but what if you want to do, do something further with these issue keys now for um if, if you have been watching my videos on uh, script now for jira i always talk about uh, um, defining a method for doing something repeatedly for example for each and every issue if you want, if you want to do something maybe Maybe for these issues, you want to go to that particular issue. Maybe you want to update something or maybe you want to further get that issues comment or whatever. Basically, we have to do something 11 times. Maybe we have to we have to check something. Uh, so we have to basically create a loop or iterate over these issues. So what I'll do, I'll uh, basically do something like uh, for these issues, I'll do each and uh, i can do something like this basically now if i do logger.info and if i now print uh, it.key this is basically my issue key that will be printed um, individually i mean of course uh, it will do the same thing but uh, now we are iterating over these issues so if i do run and if you and if you take a look at the i'll wait for it to finish it is still uh, taking some time okay so uh, now we have uh, these issues printed in the log but of course it was happening earlier as well uh now as i mentioned before if you want to do something for, for with these issues maybe maybe you want to update something for each one of them and if you want you can also create a method so maybe you want to call a method here let us say um you want to for the for the timing let us just get the issue so i'll probably create a method like get issue details and uh, i will pass in here the the object the individual issue basically and uh, what i'll do i'll uh, create a method get issue details and uh, this will be i mean i'm going to pass the actual issue and here we can do something like this logger.info and i'll print uh, maybe the issue key for example let us just print the issue key
and now we have the issue that will be uh, passed from the from the each above and we just want to first print the issue key now what i'll do i'll uh, get rid of this this part here and i will call this method which is get issue details now of course i'm getting this method to show you and demonstrate to you that uh, of course we are just doing the same thing again but it is now breaking up that particular portion of the code and now we are handling it separately now what we can do, we can iterate over these issues and we can do something. Of course, in the beginning, we are just trying to get the details, but uh, later on, maybe if you want to add more features, maybe you want to update something, you can do that. Now you can do that. Now you can do, do, the, do the same thing using uh, maybe your own method. Um, and uh, th that is how you will build, you know, some automation. Maybe you want to add some more business logic. For, but first, of course, let us uh, run this code. If I run this, uh, so we have some some error and uh, I want to now, I, I don't know what happened. So let us take a look. So we are trying to call uh, this uh, method get issue details and uh, we are passing a pa passing the same here. Uh, I mean, the, the method name is correct. Logger.info is correct. Let me take a look at the error. Okay, so it is complaining about the static uh, type checking. So let me try to figure out what happened here. So it looks good. Hmm, this is interesting. Let me just take a look at my code very quickly. Yeah, it happens. I mean, from I mean, sometimes you can uh, sometimes you get into trouble and uh, you have to fix it. So we were trying to pass the actual issue here. Let us go back and try to run it again. Was it something wrong with the with the code, or maybe oh yeah, I think it was not nothing wrong with the code. I think the code was correct. Now, if you look at the log here, so yeah, it is working. So we can now fetch the issue key. Now you can of course do further things. Maybe you want to fetch, uh, what else? Let us fetch the priority. And for doing that, I'll take a look at the, uh, the, issue, the issue itself. So for priority, we, we did the same thing in, in previous example. So we have, uh, for, 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 for a specific issue, we're talking about uh, the issue key, then fields, then uh, priority and if you remember from the previous example i think the priority can be fetched by using this for that for, for a specific uh, issue we're talking about fields.priority.name so I'll, I'll just copy it to keep it simple and i guess it will work so i'll go to my code and uh, i will do something like this issue dot fields.priority.name and by the way if you're using talent api or something similar tool i think it is a bit bit easier for example, for a specific issue, if you want to see, we have to first go inside the fields, then we have to take a look at the priority. I think it is always convenient when you can expand and uh, collapse. So this looks good to me. And uh, so we, c we can now uh, fetch the details. What we will do now, I think it will work. I'm quite confident. So yeah, it worked. So we can print the Shuki and the priority. So maybe I want to display them uh, issue key plus I'll just print them uh, side by side. Okay, so this is of course uh, a good start. We are of course, uh, def definitely we are iterating over these issues, but what I really want to do is I want to, um, I want to uh, do updation, bulk updation. Yes, or uh, maybe you want to go through those issues and maybe you want to check if uh, they have subtask or maybe you want to close their subtask. So basically some, some kind of bulk updation bulk operation, but of course, with your, with your own logic. But I think this is a good start uh, using this piece of code. Uh, 
we are fetching the issues and we are then iterating over them and of course you can always create your own custom method to do something with those issues and uh, that is all i wanted to share in this video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much